Less than 10. I hope that you've learned a lot of stuff from this lesson. I hope that it's been beneficial for you. Um, I, I loved writing this course. I, I just absolutely loved it. So much stuff from this course um, really had a personal impact for me, um, a, a very, um, very important um, role in my life. Uh, I just I cannot overstate the amount of um, changes that happened in me as a Christian, how, how much more confident I was uh, from learning these things. Um, and so it's just such a pleasure to be able to pass it on to you. Um, but if you remember nothing else from this course, remember this. Balance. Balance. Remember that word. See, as Christians, we're not called to not do anything. Oh, well, you can't play video games. You can't watch movies. You can't go out to, uh, you know, you can't dance. You can't go to movie theaters. You can't uh, drink at all. You can't um, uh, smoke. You can't do this. You can't do that. You can't do the other thing. A lot of times the answer it doesn't doesn't lie in the extremes of what you can and cannot do. Oftentimes the answer lies in the balance. In the balance. Okay. Are we called to um, to only hang out with the world, or are we tried and called to only hang out hang out with the body? Well, neither. We're called to encourage each other as a body to meet together to continue to, to unify ourselves together we're also called to go out into the world okay there is a balance there and there's lots of different things in in, in uh, Christianity where people make it out as though there's only a right and a wrong when oftentimes it's just about balance in your life can you eat or do you have to eat everything or can you not eat anything well no neither you just eat in balance eat the, eat, eat responsibly um, can 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 you can you use any credit, or do you have to completely uh, ignore 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 credit and credit cards and those kinds of things? Well, neither. You can use credit. Just use credit responsibly. Pay it off every month. These kinds of things. Um, it, it's about. It's it's not about. Um, it's not about extremes on these things. Um, do you can do, must you only listen to to Christian music that has officially stamped on it Christian you know that every song has Jesus in every single uh, chorus or whatever no not at all but at the same time you shouldn't be listening to a bunch of stuff that that, that encourages the lust of the flesh see what I mean find a balance I listen to like for instance um, Sixpence None the Richer now even though they're not necessarily a Christian band in the sense that they always talk about God or something um, you know they aren't. Is it, I hope that this is making sense. Or oh, let me give you a better example. Um, the classic crime. I like them. They're they're a really good really good band. And they um, have gone on the record by saying that we are not a Christian band um, because there are some people in the band who are Christian, and there are some of the things that we sing about are Christian concepts. We are not a Christian band. You know what I mean? And and and, and okay. All right. Fine. Um, or you know things like that. But when we, when we listen to like these different country songs and these different rap songs that are that are glorifying the lust of the flesh, you know, Capaho and all kind. I don't know rap songs. Just bear with me on this. But when they sing stuff about stuff that, that has nothing to do with with glorifying um, God, has nothing to do with loving people, has to do with selfish desires. You know, um, how how well can you flash your booty for your for your man and all these different things and. You know, um, was it? It's, I forget that one country song. Something about um, God is good, beer is great, or something. Whatever. See, what I mean, like things that, that technically mention God, but it has nothing to do with with God. One song will be like, "Oh Jesus, I love you," and the next song will be all like, "Some guy wronged me on the road, so I cut him off, and then I stabbed him in the heart." And it's like, "Whoa, that escalated drastically." You know, um, it's about balance. Christian life is oftentimes about balance. Um, I'm not saying that we have to be in the middle of the road about everything. I'm not saying that we don't have to stand firm in our beliefs that Jesus is the only way and that Jesus is God and those kinds of things. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying we have to say homosexuality is good. I'm not saying that we have to say that say that good is bad and bad is good. I'm not saying that at all. Okay. What I'm saying is that sometimes we make big deals out of things that don't have to be either or. You know, they don't have to be either or. Drinking. 
do you have to either not drink anything or get drunk all the time? No, there is a middle of the road. The problem is, is that many people aren't able to reach that middle of the road, and so it's better to just abstain from it than, than tempt yourself past what you're able. See what I mean? Balance. It's not about, see what I mean? It just, I hope that you remember that word. Balance. Balance. Do you, have to, do you have to make a big deal out of everything, or do you have to uh, be passive about everything? Well, neither. Do you have to uh, uh, rise up against the, the government in rebellion, or do you have to just simply passively sit by and say, you know what, the government's the government, and we have to just sit, sit back and let them do whatever they're going to do? Well, neither. You don't have to rebel against the government, but goodness sakes, it's America. If you have the right to vote, go vote. You know, the, if you can do something to change the situation, do it. it it's, it's about balance. So... With that, and that, that is a nice little introduction for reinvention. This is an idea that I got from a from a professor. Um, I, I worked um, for him for a semester or two. Uh, just a, a really great guy, and I was having some problems with something, and I asked him, uh, you know, uh, what he thought I should I should do, and he said, reinvent yourself. And I said, well, what do you mean? He said, never stop growing. Constantly learn, constantly adapt, constantly change. Never reach a place where you think you've arrived. Never reach a place where you think that that you know it all. Never get to that, get to that place. Reinvent yourself. And I cannot overstate that, how important that is. Never reach a place. Never reach a place of I have arrived. So practical steps to overcoming addictive behaviors and attitudes. First off, get a physical. Sometimes people think that, that they're having a spiritual attack. No, all the times it's a physical attack. Well, I'm having these bouts of depression. Well, do you have something you know up here that, that is in, imbalanced, that you need medication of some sort? Oh, well, I don't believe in medication. Well, now hold on. God gave those doctors the knowledge. You should definitely utilize that knowledge. I mean, he's given, he's given you the ability to be free by taking the medication. Now, obviously, what, what the Bible doesn't condone is when you only trust in medicine and you don't trust in God. Trust in God, but use the resources that he's given. Does that make sense? Once again, balance. You don't have to only use doctors, but you don't have to abhor doctors. Okay? Trust in God. Your trust is in God, not in the medicine, but you are using what God has given you to use. Okay? So, Another thing, exercise daily. Our physical bodies frequently lead to spiritual problems. Oh, I'm just not. I'm just feeling real down. Well, that's because you've been eating McDonald's every day. Goodness sakes! You know, I was listening to um, some Christian uh, comedian on. I think it was on YouTube, and he was saying about um, how we do this magical incantation over our over our food. Lord, cause this food to nourish my body, even though it's a bucket of grease. <laughs> cause it to, to to bring my body the sustenance that it needs. And it's like, well, you know, you could eat a salad. Just throw that out there. Um, you have an apple or something. I mean, goodness sakes. Um, but exercise daily. Um, you'd be surprised the amount of problems go away when we exercise. Um, just change your eating habit. Eat healthier foods and eat regularly. I don't know about you, but if I eat something for breakfast when I haven't had breakfast in a long time, and then I don't eat a, eat, and then I eat lunch kind of late, I get real shaky. I get kind of, you know, um, you know, it's a very, it's very. Um, very important to have a regular eating eating schedule that, that you can follow and that'll 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 help you. Um, but also eating healthier foods and exercising really will help you get proper sleep. Sometimes people have problems just simply because they don't take care of their bodies. Oh, well, I, my body is for me. I'm not for it. Uh, well, yes, that's true, but you don't have to live as foolish. Um, sometimes we can cut down years off of our life, and we can cut down the quality on our life by not eating well and by not exercising well once again there is there is an in between you know you don't have to be a workout freak but you don't have to never exercise either see what i mean you don't have to be uh, the next arnold schwarzenegger that's not what i'm saying at all uh but once again balance wonderful word learn it well balance judge your thoughts and answer them with scripture um oftentimes when we have uh thoughts um, that are that are not um, that are not good thoughts. We just let them go, and we start worrying and all kinds of different things. Well, that's not good. In Matthew four one through eleven. Um, this is what Jesus did when Satan, when Satan was trying to tempt him. He answered that it was scripture. Um, that's Matthew four one through eleven. And in Philippians four eight through nine, he says to think about whatever things are good and honorable and all these things. And that leads the question and the the person inevitably to ask this question: How do I think on better things? I just can't control my thinking. Well. 
Paul gave you an outline in the verses that that precede that. See, in, in, in chapter 4, verses 8 through 9, he says, Brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, think on these things, right? But before that, he says, Rejoice in the Lord. Um, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Um, and then he says, think on the, think on the things. So if you can't get your controlling under, uh, if you can't get your thinking under control, first rejoice in the Lord, worship Him, just get alone on, go alone with Him, read through the Bible. If you, if if you're so distraught that you can't even focus on the words on the paper, just just meditate about uh, meditate on Him, just think about Him. Okay, I'm not saying do do the lotus and all kinds of stuff, you know, with the yoga. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm saying just think uh, think about God, think about what His Word says, what you know that it says. Um, and, and, and find find comfort in that. Worship him. Put on some worship music if you have to. Just do whatever it takes to, to guide your thinking into that, into that place of being able to rejoice. Um, and obviously you won't really mean it at first, but as you continue to worship, your mind will will clear up more and more, and you will eventually mean what you're saying. Okay? I'm not saying necessarily fake it till you make it, but I mean, hey, if that helps you to understand, sure. Um, and then um, pray about it. You know, and I'm not just saying pray about it. I'm saying, you know, Lord, I trust you with this. I pray that you would take control over this. Um, I pray that you'd help me in this situation. Lord, give me peace. Um, show me your goodness, Lord. I just thank you for how good you are. Lord, I, I thank you for what you're doing in my life. You know, you're, you're, you're separating yourself from the situation, and you're focusing it on God. And then you're able to change how, to change where, your, where your thinking is at. So then, what do you think about? Think on things that are true, that are noble, that are right, that are pure, that are lovely, that is admirable, that is excellent or worthy or, or worthy of praise. Those are the things we're thinking about. So, judge your thoughts and answer them with scripture. Resolve all conflicts to the best of your ability. Sometimes we don't, don't, we don't feel well because of conflicts that are going on. Don't tempt yourself. <laughs> Boy, don't tempt yourself. For instance, hanging with friends who drink. Uh, home alone when you have internet access. Not going to bed when your spouse goes to bed. Not being accountable to someone for major purchases or for anything else. If you are being tempted with sexual immorality, have sex with your wife. It's that simple. Oh, well, well, my, my wife doesn't want to have sex with me. Look, if you go to her and say, look, I'm having a really hard time. I'm being tempted in a lot of different things. Can we have sex? Not only that, but it, goodness sakes, if she doesn't have sex with you, there's probably a reason for it. Check your attitude. Are you talking to her like a person? Are you treating her like a person? Or are you treating her like a dog? I mean, let's be honest. Sometimes husbands, you do treat your wives like dogs. So, um, but also, I, I want to I hold on on that. Um, yeah, don't, but uh, just get that in your heart. Don't tempt yourself in something. Resolve the conflicts to the best of your ability. Okay, when you're in a situation, resolve it, but then don't tempt yourself with things, okay? Those two factors right there contribute a large amount to, 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 to sin. You know, when we do things stupid, sometimes we can lead ourselves into a place of temptation because um, we are we are doing things the right way. Um, is uh, I'll try to kind of maybe say this in another way. Um, when we do things we aren't supposed to, we are in a position that we wouldn't have been otherwise. Like, let's say, for instance, you are underage, and your dad suggests that you go to college to get a degree, but you, you know, knowing best, decide to go to a Bible college. Okay. Um, and so by you being at that Bible college, you were unable to learn perseverance, you were unable to learn guidance, and you were unable to learn humility. Then when you go into the ministry, you get voted out of the church because of your pride. See what I mean? Because you didn't listen to your father, who was just trying to help you. See what I mean? Uh, maybe a bad example for you, but I'm sure you see what I'm saying. You led yourself to a place of being tempted because you were not able to resolve a conflict to the best of your ability. Best of your ability. This is what people do. Oh, well, I didn't do anything wrong. They just have a problem with me, so that's their, their fault. Well, no, that's just as about as dumb as can be. It's your fault. Not your fault, but your, your problem. You need to deal with this, is what I'm saying. Um, don't apologize for your spouse. So I do want to drive this one home. Um, sometimes we get the idea that you know we need to apologize to people to our, for our spouses. Oh, they did something dumb, or do, 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 do. just don't even. Okay, just don't. You're opening yourself up for. First off, other people are not dumb. They're gonna see that there's conflict with them. But then also, your spouse isn't retarded. They're gonna they're gonna see that that you don't respect their opinion. That that, that you having feeling the need to apologize for them. I mean, goodness sakes. Um, don't assume you'll become so spiritual you will always overcome or never be tempted. I haven't looked at porn for over a year now. 
That means I can stay at home with the internet. Don't tempt yourself. Don't be stupid. When temptations enter your mind, don't dwell on them. Go, if, if, for instance, I have the desire to look at porn. Go take a cold shower. Go take a hike. I mean, goodness sakes, go do something else somewhere else. Don't give an opportunity for the flesh. Um, I mean, I can't even say this enough times. Don't assume you'll become so spiritual, um, and don't assume that the, don't don't be ignorant of what's going on. Um, Matthew five twenty seven. Um, you have heard that it was said you shall not commit adultery. Um, where am I going with this? 5, 27 through 28. Ah, I got it. Uh, but I tell you, anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Um, not just the fact that, that, you know, he's saying that the heart matters, but I do want to emphasize another point. Um, if you lust after something in your heart, eventually it'll, it will progress to other things. Okay. For in the abundance of the heart, not just the mouth speaks, but also the hands work. Remember that. Um, 1 Corinthians 7, 5. says, um, Do not deprive each other except perhaps by mutual consent and for a time so that you may devote yourself to prayer. Then come together again so Satan will not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. Don't withhold from each other. Um, 10, 12 to 13. So if you think you are standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to man, kind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. Okay, notice that last part. What we do is we say that the Bible says this. The Bible says you won't be tempted past, past what you can handle. That's not what it says at all. Um, past what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. In other words, nobody has the excuse of saying, I had to do it. There's always a way out. Um, oftentimes, God, uh, temptation will come more than we can handle, so that we have to depend on God and, um, um, and, 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 and follow him in that way out of the temptation. After we receive Christ, the Holy Spirit begins transforming us into his image. Um, see, why I want to emphasize this is because what we do is we've misunderstood what he's saying here. He's saying that by human power, I can overcome anything. I mean, we're saying, by human power, I can overcome anything that's thrown at me, and I can be, I got the eye of the tag, you know. But that's not necessarily what, what he's saying here. Um, it, it's, the, it's the spirit who empowers us, not ourselves, okay? Um so, but anyways, after we receive Christ, the Holy Spirit begins transforming us into his image. Um, and so this is a process. Be patient. Separate yourself from whatever encourages sin. I can get my clicker to work here. Um, uh, movies with sex scenes, if you have a problem with sexual immorality. Music with ungodly lyrics, if you have problems with, with um, thinking. Or music with uh, ungodly principles. Uh, friends who smoke and drink. You know, separate yourselves from whatever encourages you to sin. Notice what is having a positive effect towards sin in your life, and just separate yourself from it. Um, and also, it is a good idea if you're coming from a drug background, just get new friends. Just get new friends. Minimize uh, benefits and magnify the consequence. And you don't have to turn people off, but I'm saying don't be oblivious to the fact that you are definitely, um, definitely an addict. Just because you are, have been off for a while doesn't mean that you should assume that you will be off for forever. Minimize benefits and magnify the consequences of sin. When you stop thinking about um, about how good something feels, and you start thinking about the bad things that will come from it, I mean, goodness sakes, that that opens your eyes. Um, oh, this is going to make me feel so good. No, it's going to make you feel good for a few seconds, and then um, you're gonna you're gonna feel guilty, or you're gonna have your relationship with your wife is gonna get worse. You know, things like that. Um, Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11, 24 through 26. 
By faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. The fleeting pleasures of sin. He regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ as of greater value than the treasure of Egypt because he was looking ahead to his reward. Exodus 34.7 You know, the Bible of the Old Testament, of the New Testament, early New Testament church was the Old Testament. Okay, they didn't have the other books. Um, that's kind of important, so that you realize that the New Testament, all that it does is takes the principles from the Old Testament and applies it in a new context. The Old Testament is still very valid. Okay, um, just misunderstood. Exodus um, thirty-four seven says um, ma maintaining love to thousands and forgiving wickedness, rebellion, and sin. Yet he does not love, uh, leave the guilty unpunished. He punishes the children and their children for the son and their children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation. Um, there are definitely consequences to our sin against the Lord. There are things that, 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 that happen. Um, for those of you who have an alcoholic father, it's very easy for you to fall in alcoholism, or for one of your siblings, and then for some of their siblings or children. So I mean, it's something that that, that very much so passes on. Um, and we talked about, oh, well, I'm nothing like my father. We talked about that in the conscience lesson um, about how you can be like your father without even thinking that you're like your father. Um, Romans 13:14 says. Um, Rather, to clothe yourself with the Lord Jesus Christ and do not think about how to gratify the desires of the flesh. Don't think about that. Don't give opportunity for that. Um, um, remember... Um, Hmm. Okay. Um, remember, you will regret your sin longer than you will enjoy it. You will regret your sin longer than you will enjoy it. Always remember that. Um, discover your triggers. Sometimes we condition ourselves uh, to sin. Um, we become conditioned to behave or feel based on repeated patterns. Okay. For instance, every time I play certain video games, I feel enticed to watch porn. Or when it rains, I feel I feel really sad. Sometimes these are things that have happened in our lives. Sometimes they're things that we just um, it just happens that that's a pattern that we've repeated, and it becomes a situation where every time that it happens, it entices us to sin because it's a pattern. It's a trigger for us to sin, um, or for us to be um, fall into a place of, of despair. I, um, I've been smoking after work every day. Um, uh, every day since I was in high school, I tried to quit, but at that time I get a desire and I, that I can't fight off. Um, that, that's an example. Um, um, some people forget to take their morning pills unless they have breakfast, right? That's a pattern. So discover your triggers and then discover how you can change that. Because sometimes you can just avoid the trigger and avoid the problem. Let's say, for instance, every time I play... Um, Skyrim is a, play, is a game that I seriously... I, I think that I maybe got over two billion hours played on that game. I, I swear, I, 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 I'm an addict. I need to stop. Skyrim is just, ah, oh, it was addictive, okay? I won't apologize. No, I will. I will. I'm sorry. Um, Skyrim is, is a game that I play a lot, so I'll just use it as, as an example. Every time that I play Skyrim, I, I, I really get the urge to just have a beer. So, see what I mean? And, 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 and so... You condition yourself to sin. So I mean, so if you're having a problem with drinking, stop playing that video game. Play a different one, or just hang off video games for a while, and then see if that if that helps. Um, keep a keep a journal every time that you're that you're um, tempted. You know, write down what you were tempted to do and what preceded that thing. You might find some patterns. Um, um, I would add that written down right there. Um, change your lifestyle and some temptations will be removed automatically. Um, I already mentioned that. Um, eventually you will discover common... Common what? Common what? Common factors. Eventually you will discover common factors that led you to the sin. So, uh, 
uh, be, be aware of life cycles, sinful patterns which lead to sinful habits. Um, a cycle can be a length of time, a circumstance, or even weather conditions. Okay, Obeying less of the flesh establishes a pattern of sin. I follow my flow of thought here. I'll just move this out of the way for this. Um, these patterns continue to grow stronger until they become habits. Okay. When we are when we are saved, we receive a new nature. So if we obey the Holy Spirit rather than the lust of the flesh, we form spiritual patterns rather than sinful patterns. If we don't, we form sinful patterns. There will be there will still be a pull from our old nature, but however, it won't be a pattern in our life anymore. If we obey the lust, we stop God's work in and through us. We we hold off God's grace in, in a sense. Um, if we obey the Spirit, we build spiritual patterns. If these patterns continue to grow, we gain a desire to do what is right over what is wrong. This produces moral freedom. Let me show you like this, okay? He, the circle represents, um, um, you know, a life cycle, if you will. Um, let's say the life cycle is a period of a week, okay? Or um, a weather condition or whatever, it doesn't matter. And every time that something happens, you are tempted and you... Um, you okay? I'll use this bottom one. It says sinful patterns here. You always do the wrong thing for that, and then you're going and the same, and that thing presents itself, and you do it wrong again, and you just it's a, it's an endless cycle. But then when we are saved, we receive a new nature, and that gives us the opportunity by the power of the Holy Spirit to respond differently in the same situations. See what I mean? And we, we if we obey the the Spirit rather than than continuing with what feels right with the lust of the flesh. Um, we build a new pattern, and these develop into habits. Okay, these patterns. Where there it is. These patterns develop into habits. Okay, um, pa habits are repeated patterns. Okay, so here's the cycles. Here's the patterns. These are the cycles. This is the patterns. Here's your new nature, and here's your old nature. And so these patterns will be based off of whoever your boss is. If it's yourself, it's going to be these. The sinful pat patterns, you will fall back into sin, you will fall back into messing up. If your boss is God and you're constantly focusing your eyes on that, that will focus on this. If 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 your boss is your sin, you're always focusing on your sin and, and the things that you're doing wrong, it's gonna build up more sin. My wife and I had a fight, so I looked at porn to get back at her to make my to make myself feel better. Because I looked at porn, my wife and I had another fight, so I looked at porn again. My wife and I got a divorce, and I look at porn to feel better about her abandoning me. I see. I see. I mean that that focus there. Her abandoning me. I live by myself now, and I look at porn every day, every night before I go to bed. See how there, there's a pattern that, that, that develops that becomes a habit. See what I mean? It's a process, um, and it's built on those three stages of sin that we talked about in the last lesson. So, people are either are always either um, People are, are always either obeying or fighting sin. There is no such thing as, as, as just simply being. You are either seeking after the Lord or you are not seeking after the Lord. And when you are not seeking after the Lord, you are obeying um, sin. So, patience or anger, you will either actively pursue one or the other. If you have a problem with anger, you will have to actively pursue uh, patience. When you are tempted to sin, realize it is an opportunity to test your faith. Okay, James uh, 1, 2-4, through 4, consider it all joy. Um, uh, pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Um, and, uh, let's see. Um, I'll finish your faith. Okay. The more you obey God, the more you... There it is. The more you desire to do what is right. Okay? So... Don't give up. Hebrews 10.39. Um, says, um, but we do not, but we do not belong to those who shrink back and are destroyed, but to those who have faith and are saved. Okay. Don't give up. No matter how spiritual you become, your flesh will always love the lust of the flesh. You will always be human. You choose to sin because you like it. That's what it comes down to. So submit your desires to the Lord. He will give you new desires. Okay. When you hold on to your desires, it prevents the Lord from changing your heart. Because, once again, your focus is not on God. It's on yourself. And when you, there's a focus on yourself, an inward focus, it puts a wall and a block between you and God. Therefore, you don't want, uh, you don't want what God wants. So uh, don't work around sin. AIDS could be eradicated in a generation. Just think about that. 
don't work around sin. We, we've, we've come up with ways to, to um, work around problems rather than to fix the problem. See what I mean? And it's the same thing in, in society as it, is, as it is in us. AIDS could be eradicated within a generation or two. Um, obviously, some people who have, who have AIDS would have to not uh, breed. Um, they would have to give up a lot. They would have to sacrifice a lot. But it, it would be doable. Um, and then the next gen, the people after that would just have to simply stop sleeping around. <laughs> um, <laughs> and and uh, well, and once again, it would require a sacrifice, but it is possible. And that's my that's my point, is that it, it, we don't have to work around sin. We can just simply try to stop sinning. <laughs> you know, it, it, just don't have sex with a bunch of people. You know, it, it, keep yourself pure for pure for uh, for your marriage. And for those people who say there's no, there aren't there aren't that many virgins, um, I beg to differ. Me and my wife were both virgins um, when we got married, um, and there are definitely ways of telling when someone's a virgin or not. Um, so for, for those of you who would say something ignorant like, "Oh well, she just told you that she was a virgin," no, there's ways of knowing. There are ways of knowing. Um, not everybody is having sex before marriage. Not everybody is doing that. Some people are doing that. Maybe the people you are hanging around with are doing that, but not everybody is doing that. Um, all right. Don't work around. So I already mentioned that. Okay. So um, the next thing we're going to be talking about is stewardship, but I'm going to wait for that for the next lesson. I'm going to go ahead and stop here. These are some practical steps to overcoming addictive behaviors and attitudes. Just real practical ideas. Okay. It's not meant to be a substitute for counseling. It's not meant to be a substitute for drugs or for psychology or for anything like that. Just meant to be a real simple basis for 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 facing things. Okay. Um, obviously, if you need help, seek help. I'm not saying anything against that, but anyways. Um, Remember, pastors and theologians are not doctors. Remember that, okay? So, okay, I will see you in the next video. We'll talk about stewardship, correcting uh, physical and spiritual laziness, and then reinventing yourself.